Hey there guys, today we're doing a comparison between the Ryzen 9 6900HS and the AMD Ryzen 5 5500U. Now this is really mostly a comparison between RDNA 2 and Vega here because of the fact that that is really where the bulk of the performance difference is going to come from. The CPU just does not do as much here. And you can see here we're running the game's built-in benchmark so that we can get the most consistent and accurate numbers for comparison's sake. And you can see that the performance difference at 1080p with the lowest reset and FSR set to performance mode, we are pretty much looking at double the performance going from the 5500U to the 6900HS. Now, the TDP differences are major here. The 5500U is pretty much capped at a TDP of 25 watts here, while the 6900HS is using up to 70, 75 watts, sometimes going a little higher than that for boost reasons, but it's mostly 75 watts. Now, I think that that is, for the most part, a fair enough enough comparison just because of the fact that when will you ever find a 5500U that has a TDP of 75 watts? It's not a chip that's designed for that and you will almost never see it go past 25 watts. I have yet to find a single laptop out there that actually comes with it at even 25 watts, let alone past that. At least at these lower price ranges, that's pretty much what it just ends up coming out as. It's just 15 watts all the time and you can unlock it, you know, raise it to 25 watts. The 6900HS though, I mean here it's just using up the 75 watts that it's allocated and it is doing the most with all of that. I don't think that the wattage actually matters that much. I think if we even just dropped the wattage by like 30 watts, the performance difference would be negligible because the iGPU is pretty much just going to run at its max speed, which is 2400. And before anybody says anything, the number that you see there is the GPU memory clock. I understand that. It just says that because our DDR5 RAM in here is clocked at 4800 megahertz. So because, you know, dat double data rate, we essentially get half of it showing there. And I actually don't have the GPU clock speed on the screen there because of the fact that as of right now, the version of MSI Afterburner that I have cannot read the clock speed of the RDNA 2 GPU that's in here. But just looking at the AMD software, you can actually see what the clock speed of it is, and it is 2400, which is what it's rated to. And iGPUs function completely different than DGPUs. They are not going to overclock themselves. They have a set speed that they are going to run at, or they will downclock if necessary necessary. But here you'll see when we actually jump into the original quality preset, we are getting a, again, noticeable difference in performance. The 5500U is really starting to struggle here. Those 1% lows are getting into territory where it might start to be an annoyance for some people. Both are obviously playable games, but there is a huge difference between the 33 FPS average that we're getting in the 5500U and the 64 FPS average that we're getting on the Radeon 680. M. Really, this is a generational leap in terms of performance. This is comparing like a game on a PS4 versus a PS5. And I'm not saying that the R9 6900 HS performs at the level of a PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5 is a more powerful system than this. But the comparison here in terms of the generational jump is pretty substantial here. I mean, what AMD has really just done here is demonstrated that they are in the lead in terms of IGPU performance by a significant margin that Intel just created currently cannot compete because they are refreshing their current generation of iGPUs for Alder Lake. By the looks of it, it might not be until Raptor Lake that we actually get an update to the iGPU. Now, Raptor Lake is actually not that far away in terms of the fact that Raptor Lake should be launching at the end of this year, but I think that that's just going to be the desktop version. I'm almost positive that we are not going to start to see the mobile variants of it until next year's CES and past that. I mean, they still haven't even fully rolled out the low wattage Alder Lake CPUs, which means that for the rest of 2022 and early 2023, AMD is just going to have the iGPU crown at the top end, which is to be fair, the most irrelevant point for the iGPU market because of the fact that it is at a price range where no one wants an iGPU. If you're spending $1,600 on a laptop, you want a dedicated graphics card. You either want that or you want a major amazing battery life or you want essentially just to have the craziest amount of performance in the most portable package and I don't really think there's going to be that many people that are going to be offering that in terms of OEMs but the performance that we're getting here is substantial enough that there could be companies out there that are like you know what let's make a gaming laptop that only has a 6900 HS and let's just put in the biggest battery we possibly can get the best iGPU cooling possible and you are 
are going to now have a system that is very low wattage, very portable, and it's going to give you pretty decent performance in a lot of modern titles. You can see here, we jump over to the highest preset. Well, not the highest preset. This is favorite performance. It's not ultra preset. We are still slightly below a 60 FPS average. Our 1% lows are not dropping below 40. And look at the 5500U. The 5500U at this point is really struggling. It would really take you being very dedicated to playing this at these graphics quality settings to want to play the game at those settings. The 1% lows aren't as bad as you would expect them to have been. At least I was expecting them to be worse, but it's still in the low 20. A low 21% lows is not going to be great when you can just play it at the lower presets and at least be at around like a 30 fps average with one percent lows in the mid 20s but again we're talking about completely different levels of playability here you know like one is actually a legit competitor for some older gaming computers while the other one is really just going to allow you to play games but not at the best settings not at the best quality settings the 5500 you really lends itself better to 720p while the 680m has shown that 1080p gaming is possible and at very decent frame rate with very decent quality presets. FSR is, of course, the biggest hero here. FSR is allowing both of these chips to maximize the amount of performance that they will give out to you. And really, FSR just does not look anywhere near as good as DLSS, but I mean, at least it's available on this kind of stuff, you know? Like, I would rather have FSR over nothing. Really, I'm just very, very curious to see where the Ryzen 5s actually end up falling in terms of performance, because we are talking about half the amount of cores on the GPUs. So it's going to be interesting to see where those actually end up landing in terms of performance charts but so far the numbers that we're getting here on rdna2 are just showing us that this is going to be some incredible levels of performance and this is eventually going to end up trickling down into the budget market so this should have you very very excited and if you're considering buying a laptop within the next year or two it might be beneficial for you to wait i normally would not suggest waiting for hardware because it's a losing man's game a lot of the time because you end up waiting forever eventually Eventually, you're just going to have to budge and buy something and understand that a new generation of things are going to come at some point and what you have now is just not going to be modern edge forever. But the performance difference between Vega and RDNA 2 right now is substantial enough that it might be beneficial to just wait until you can get an RDNA 2 based system. I mean, let me show you something really cool. Here is the game running at the lowest preset, but at the native resolution of the Zephyrus G14. So this is running at 2560 by 1600 no fsr whatsoever fsr is disabled which is why it looks a lot clearer than the other runs did as well as the fact that it is running at a higher resolution and the performance that we're getting here is pretty much comparable to the 5500u running the game at like original quality settings at 1080p so this should show you the level of performance that is here available on this chip like that we're running a game at 1440p at what you know some people would consider to be playable frame rates if I was getting this frame rate in this game and this was the only way I could play it and there was no possible way of me fixing this, I could get away with playing it like this, which is why I say the 5500U is a playable experience. It's just not going to be amazing. But here, we're, we're at above 1440p. I mean, the resolution of this screen on this laptop is actually higher than the resolution of the monitor that I normally just game on because I play on a 1440p screen, but it's 16 by 9. This is a 16 by 10 display. What I'm really curious to see is if AMD is going to do what they did with with Vega where there are going to be practically no generational improvements year over year besides maybe slight clock bumps. I hope that's not the case. I hope that they actually start to be very aggressive with their iGPU development and they actually start to roll out some very, very competitive iGPUs because this one is very competitive. This is pretty much giving them the crown of iGPUs. There is no one that can really compete with them in terms of iGPU besides Apple. And Apple's case is a pretty unique one in that pretty much what they have developed is a CPU GPU combo all built in one gigantic package unfortunately in terms of gaming performance it actually does give some very decent gaming performance but you're stuck on playing on a mac and the mac just does not support anywhere near as many games as windows does or even linux does you know and i'm not the biggest fan of linux gaming but the steam deck is more compelling as a gaming device than any apple device out there because at least it'll have game you know so this right here is in terms of windows users this is as good of an igpu as you're going to get because this is a 
more powerful iGPU than the Steam Deck. So this right here is essentially the crown jewel of iGPUs right now. And it is remarkable. And again, I would not recommend playing this game like this. This is really just for essentially academic reasons. That is the only reason I'm showing you this, just so that you can see how it performs at the native resolution here. But my God, the performance level that we were getting is really, really impressive. With that said, I hope you guys found this comparison useful and helpful. And if you did, be sure to subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one. We're obviously going to be doing more comparisons like this, as well as we're going to be doing more standalone videos on the different chips. I've kind of just slowed down because I was trying to work on one huge major video where I was going to have a bunch of games in there. But at this point, it's uh, it's over an hour long and I've decided I don't really want to put a video that's that long and just kill my watch time. So that's going to be just something that I'm going to release in parts, essentially Pr probably going to start to bundle different games together in videos, but I'll figure out how I'm going to do it. But the uploads will start to become more frequent from now on. I will see you guys next time, though. Bye.